Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. <laughs> Welcome to the Halloween special for 2011 for Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another scary edition of the show. We have three wines here. Help if I would turn the label around a little bit. We have three wines here in the Halloween spirit, sort of. Um, I've got uh, two of them that are in the $20 price range, one in the $5 price range. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with the cheaper of the three, the cheapest of the three. Uh, that is called the El Gato Negro. Actually, it's just called Gato Negro. No L in front of it. It's a Malbec. It's from Chile. 100% um, <clears throat> Malbec. This particular producer uh, has been around for quite a while. And... Um, Yeah, nothing on this. I didn't prepare anything. This was that fog and all those stuff and dry ice melted, evaporated. All right, so let's just get started here. It's Halloween and I'm getting all set up. I got the old costume going. I got some candles going. I got a cauldron with no smoke coming out of it. So it's my spit bucket. And um, so we got the Gato Negro Malbec, uh, again from Chile. And um, it's five bucks ish, five ish bucks. Uh, I'll have the exact price from where I uh, when I bought it at Specs. And um, obviously, Black Cat. I think we start off with that. See how it is. Now it was pretty powerful when it came out of the bottle. Um, you can really smell the wine in general. No flashing goblet this year, the batteries are dead. Go figure, two years later. Um, on the nose, just lots of spices with this. Um, it's, it's not a heavily fruit forward wine, but uh, heavily spiced. Even feel like it's a little bit, um, a little woody, uh, kind of oaky, I guess. And peppery, so spices, peppery, not 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 necessarily oak, but kind of woodsy. Let's see how it is on the palate. Oops, should have noticed there's a. Little thing at the little opening in the bottom of that. We're gonna be drinking the rest of the wine tonight. Improvise. We're gonna be drinking the rest of the wine. <laughs> oh, that was great. All right, so uh, on the palate, um, getting some raspberryness, um, still getting the peppery, kind of the white and black pepper type of flavors. Again, kind of woodsy. I, like just like brush type of stuff. 
It's okay. I mean, I'd probably give it about an 81. For five bucks, it's, it's you know, it works. I probably wouldn't um, necessarily say you need to go out and get this for a Halloween party, but because it's called Black Cat, you never know. I mean, somebody might dig it and there's lots of drinking going on. People will probably be thinking it's the greatest wine in the world. It's It's got a harshness to it that um, it's kind of throwing me off. It's, it's it's got a bite to it. Not, not, not an alcohol thing, just it's kind of like a bite to it. It's just not sour, but it's, it's, it tastes, I don't know if it, I don't think it's an off bottle. It just it seems like it's a little bit unbalanced. An 80, I think, is a fair score for it. <clears throat> like I said, for four to five dollars, it's okay, but there's, there's some other wines out there a little bit better than that. All right, so we're going to move on. Oh, yeah, finish this. Yeah. Kind of sour. Sour cherry, sour raspberry type of stuff. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to do this wine next. This is a spell wine. Now, this is a winery out of Amador County in California. Now, that's a little bit east, a couple counties east of Napa and Sonoma. Um, the Spellite family, I believe is the name of the family. I'm not going to be able to read anything on the back of these labels. Um, there's a little bit closer. You can even, how would I do that? Unless they got to a Negro. All right. Um, retails for around $18 to $20. Uh, I believe on the website you might be able to get it for 16 This particular wine is their, I think it's the Zin, it's their Zinfandel. All right, so it's, the, the, the label's kind of wraps around, but it's their Amador County Zinfandel. Now, this is the daughter of the owner of the winery. Um, uh, husband and wife started the winery uh, in the 80s, I believe, and their daughter in uh, the past decade uh, came in and uh, she works on this wine. So it's a Zinfandel, 100% uh, Zinfandel, if I remember correctly from the website. So let's check it out. Those of you that watch the show regularly know that Zinfandel is pretty much my favorite varietal, though Cabernet Franc is starting to um, rise in the ranks. Got a nice little nose to it. Um, definitely oaked. Um, getting some vanilla. I believe this is the one that mentioned rhubarb pie or rhubarb. I couldn't tell you what a rhubarb rhubarb smells or tastes like, but it's got a pie quality to it. You know, cherries, strawberries, blackberries, more like that. Christmas spice type of thing, vanilla. So definitely see some a good amount of oak. Not an unpleasant nose. Um, I might want the, the vanilla and spice part, Christmas spice toned down a little bit for my personal preference, but I don't see anything necessarily wrong with it. This has like an explosion of flavors to it. So, at the very end, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting the alcohol. I'm not sure how how heavy this is on the alcohol. Um, it looks like it says, I swear it says 16%. 16 and a half. You can feel it. I mean, I've had wines that were a little bit lower than that, Really, is that 16 and a half? 16 and a half. 
I think it's the highest alcohol wine we've had on the show. Um, I've had other wines that are a bit lower in alcohol that kind of feel like this, so it, it, it's not overpowering, but it, but it's definitely there. Um, lots of Christmassy type of spices to it. Um, you know, you, you've got right, like nutmeg and I wouldn't say necessarily ginger, but um, uh, you, you've got that really just, I, I, I mean, I would almost say this would be a great wine for Christmas or for um, uh, well, just fall. I mean, maybe like pumpkin-ish, so yeah, so it really goes with the, uh, really fits with the uh, theme here. Yeah, really, really kind of a cinnamony, pumpkin-y, nutmeg type of, type of spices going on. Tannins are kind of, <clears throat> tannins are kind of light, so it's, 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 it's got body to it, but it doesn't really dry your mouth out. I find it too distracting. Um, it, it's tasty, but I guess I've never had a flavor combination like this, so I find it a little distracting. Um, I, I, I get, you know, maybe that maybe that's what rhubarb tastes like, but you you got this you know fruit pie with a bunch of spices christmas spices to it it's a good wine not my style of zinfandel um but if you're looking for something that's that's kind of you know really really spicy i use the word a lot um this is something that you might want to seek out um like i said it's the 18 to 20 dollar range i think it's 16 on the website again i'll have the link down below or not the link, but I'll have the, you know, the lower third already happened um, that I, when I bought it at spec. Of course, there'll be a link to the website where you can buy it directly from them. Um, if I had a score, I'd probably give it an 85. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty good, you know, pretty good wine. It's, it's, it's well made. I, I think it's a tad off balance because I think, I think the spices really are overpowering it. It's got a bit of acid. I definitely, you definitely have to pair this with food. Um, I think if you had it with a pumpkin pie or a pumpkin cheesecake, uh, it would it would really start to shine a little more. Um, I, I think maybe the food will help tame the wine a bit, but by itself, I, I think I think it needs something to kind of counteract it, whether it's a complementary or a con or a um, a contrasting pairing. That's kind of up to you. I probably do a complementary with this. Um, Definitely, you know, Thanksgiving turkey. You you totally could do this. I mean, I, I I almost wish I had bought this for the Thanksgiving for the Thanksgiving special. So we'll see. Just a little too much on that, but again, not a bad wine. Not a bad wine at all. All right. <clears throat> So 85. All right, next, this is a Ghost Pines um, Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, this is a wine that's a Cabernet Sauvignon blend. All of their wines from Ghost Pines are blends of something. Um, now, this looks like it's 100, might be 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, though I think the website said, oh, I forgot to give you a vintage on this. I think this is 2006. It's hard to tell on the label. I should have looked at it ahead of time. It'll be on the lower third, or already or, or, or would have already had, and I didn't give you a vintage on this. Matter of fact, it doesn't, I don't even know if there is a vintage. There has to be. Oh yeah, there is. It's 2010. All right, there you go. All right, so this is 2009 vintage, Ghost Pines. Now, this is a winery that, uh, they take a lot of grapes from many different uh, counties. Uh, this particular blend, is from Sonoma County, Napa County, and Lake County. Uh, they have a few other counties that they take grapes from from some of their other blends. Uh, it says Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, let's see if the back tells me anything as far as what else is in there. I would have to, I will have had to have been on the website to tell you exactly, because I, I looked at the, the cab and it looked like they had some other varietals in there, but it's mostly Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's a blend of some sort. 
Uh, again, it is around $18 to $20, bought it at Specs. Uh, you can buy it directly from the winery. Um, don't confuse this with, uh, uh, what was it, the Ghost, there's another Ghost one that I was looking at, but it's a little pricier, it's like in the $50 to $100 range. So, um, uh, it seemed really cool because there was a cemetery and it all has to look like through the Napa Valley and, and, and the gentleman who founded, uh, or one of the first, you know, one of the pioneers in winemaking, and there was a cemetery there and it's all kind of, it was kind of creepy and cool, but wine's a little bit too pricey for the podcast. So, uh, well with Ghost Pines. Now this is, on my day job, we have a Ghost Pines. Um, it is not the Cabernet Sauvignon, it's, it's another, it's another Ghost Pines. But uh, I figured I'd try at least the label and to fit with the Halloween uh, theme. Get a little get a little light on the uh, label there. It's got a pretty pleasant nose. It's not. It doesn't like come at you, it doesn't like, you know, it doesn't come out and hit you in the, you know, it doesn't really come out and hit you in the mouth. Um, it's, it's just a, uh, a little more subtle. Uh, you get the hint of vanilla, so you know there's been a little bit of oak on this. I mean, it's going to be oak on a Cabernet Sauvignon you know, from California. You know, a touch of creaminess with the, you know, the pie aspect. Um, Dark fruits for for that um, blackberry, maybe blueberry. A nice nose, I do like it. Again, not a wine that just attacks you. Um, a lot tamer. Um, some spices to it. Again, you've got the you got the pie aspect, that that, that blackberry blueberry type of, of pie. A bit of vegetal component to it. So. A bit of green pepper. Might be a little Cobb Franc in there. Um, so you got a little bit of pepper in there, white, black pepper, um, a little green pepper. So you've got you've got that aspect going on. I, I find some pretty darn good wine. I, yeah, I was kind of hoping this was going to be the best of the three, partially because we saw it at work. Again, not this exact label or not this exact um, uh, thing. But um, I was hoping it was going to be the best of the three. Again, eighteen to twenty dollars. Um, I'd give it an eighty-eight. Uh, I think it's pretty darn good. Um, if I was going to tell you to buy a wine, it would be this one. Definitely this one. This one. This one you could drink by itself. Definitely want to pair it. You have to pair the Zinfandel. You can't really just drink it on its own. The Gato Negro. Yeah. You know what? You got four or five bucks. You want to try something a little different, or not, not different, but try something you maybe never had before. Buy it. But as far as Argentinian and Chilean Malbecs, you're 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 gonna find stuff that's just as good for the same price, uh, or 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 better for the same price. Ghost finds, yeah. It's pretty darn good. I, I'll recommend on that one. All right, so now that we got the Halloween part going on, or, or we're wrapping that up, uh, let's do a little housekeeping here. Uh, first of all, for some reason, yes, uh, that that if you're on TiVo, there is a lost episode. So you have to go to the website, which, well, lo and behold, there's a reason to go to the website other than just sitting on your couch watching on TiVo. Um, it is the Doisy of Your Dream um, review. 
So I was down in Sautern, specifically the community of Barsoc. So you need to go to the website to see that. Uh, great episode. Um, I really think it was uh, one of my better episodes. And uh, just because there was a lot of personal, uh, personal connection with it. But, um, so you have to go to the website for that. Uh, eventually I will start putting some written stuff on there. And um, I'm going to talk about the trip. I'm going to talk about what do you do or how do you take a wine trip to France or just going to France. Uh, I, I, did, I read a lot about what you want to do. Uh, or, or how you want to do stuff there, but there was a few things that were left out, so we're going to do some writing there eventually. Um, episode 200 is coming up soon. Uh, going to try to get something a little special locally going on. Uh, speaking of locally, this uh, <clears throat> episode will be up during the day, so if you were, happen to be one of the lucky few that have seen the episode before Halloween night, and you are local to San Antonio, uh, I definitely suggest that you stop by uh, Divinity Speaking, uh, blog, and uh, also there's an Eventbrite, um, an Eventbrite, uh, whatever event. So I'm gonna have the link below. Actually, I'll go to the website. It'll be a link you can click, but also on the lower third. So, uh, vigorously speaking, that would be uh, Ceci Barreto. She's got uh, an event going on with some Halloween wines. I'll be there to uh, sample some of the wines, and um, it's a local event. So if you're in the San Antonio area, you've got nothing to do. You don't want to deal with the little Rugrats, uh, the uh, ankle biters uh, hitting, knocking on your door. Um, wait a minute. Do a sound effect. Pounding on your door. Hopefully I remembered to, to do something with that. Um, asking for trick or treat, candies and all kinds of goodies. Um, stop by, it's kind of a happy hour thing. So we're gonna get that going on. I'll be doing some more uh, partnering with her over uh, over the next month or so. We're hopefully going to pair up for our 200th posting, my 200th episode. Oops, that was the microphone. Um, her 200th uh, posting on her blog should be sometime after Thanksgiving. We'll have a Thanksgiving episode. So I'll have uh, three wines for Thanksgiving. We'll have a Christmas episode. So we've got a lot of things going on. Um, and of course, all the wines that I bought in Bordeaux, I've got the next episode is going to be the, ne the next supermarket wine. And then after that, all the wines I bought um, while I was in France, most of them were bought in Paris. Some of them uh, were bought in uh, saint julien And uh, so we've got that going on. TiVo uh, is, is where most of my views come. But stop by the website, uh, check out uh, the sommelier school thing. We'll get that going. Let's see, if I rambled long enough, I think I have. Um, again, if you're going to buy a wine from any of these three, buy the Ghost Pines. Uh, you can buy any of the other ones. That's my recommendation. I hope all of you have a, uh, a fun, happy, and safe Halloween. Don't get too messed up. Hope, you know, well, the weekend is really when all the parties happen. But, um, you know, make sure you have a great time and, uh, Sorry, stop by the website, friend me up, and uh, we'll see everybody again next time. <laughs>